So, the green smoothie. One of the most nutritious things that you can add to your diet. If you were to change nothing else in your diet and you just added the green smoothie, I promise you it will change your life. And I know that's a huge statement, but it's something I truly believe. And the reason for that is because greens, dark green leafy vegetables, which I have here, fresh from my garden, are some of the most nutritious foods on this planet. They are phenomenal. Firstly, they are extremely alkalizing. And remember, our bodies are supposed to be alkaline. That's where everything works. But because of the, our food choices, the way we live, the stress, our bodies, our tissues tend to become more and more acidic. And that's where things like bacteria, viruses, parasites, even cancer thrive. And of course, acidity goes hand in hand with inflammation. And we know, science has proven this over and over again, that inflammation is implicated in virtually every single degenerative disease, right? So it is extremely important that we keep trying to lower our inflammation and get our bodies back into an alkaline state. And by consuming dark green leafy vegetables, that can really help. So that's number one, extremely alkalizing. But in addition to that, dark green leafy vegetables are uh, extremely nutritious as well. They have lots of vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, all those plant antioxidants that help keep us young and healthy. And very good source of protein as well, actually. And we are blessed in Zambia because we have so many different types of greens and in such abundance, but what do we do with our greens here? We cook and cook and cook and cook them to death. Basically, we're cooking out all that great nutrition because when you apply heat, high heat to anything really, you start destroying all the vitamins, you start destroying up to 40, 50% of the minerals, you denature the protein, you usually are able to destroy up to 100% of the antioxidants, those phytonutrients. So the key is we need to try and consume our dark green leafy vegetables raw. But that can be a bit tricky <laughs> because they don't taste so good if you, know, if you just start munching on the leaves. I agree, I wouldn't do that either, you know? So the green smoothie is such a wonderful way in which we can consume our dark green leafy vegetables in their raw form and still enjoy it. In fact, love it. It's so delicious. One super important thing to remember when you're making your green smoothie, and especially if you're incorporated into your diet on a daily basis, is that you have to then vary the type of greens that you're using. So today I have spinach here and I might use spinach for the next couple of days and then I might switch it to rape and then after that maybe some Chinese cabbage. Doesn't really matter which one but it's really important that you rotate the type of greens that you are using. The reason for that is because they contain oxalate. So what that is, you can think of it as a plant toxin. Most plants produce it to protect themselves from predators. Because the idea is if you have an animal coming along and you have the plant, the animal will eat a bit from that plant and then realize, well, there's a bit of oxalate here. This is obviously on a subconscious level. They're not thinking that. And they'll say, well, I've had enough of this plant. I'm gonna go and eat another plant now. And hence, that plant will not all be consumed, they'll still survive. So it's a way for the plants to protect themselves. Now, because we have eaten plants for centuries and centuries, eons really, uh, our bodies are used to these oxalates. They can manage them in small quantities. It doesn't cause a problem. The problem arises if you eat quite large amounts of it. And that's why we want to vary the greens. It's not a concern, right? You don't need to worry about this really, but just for precaution, vary the greens. And remember, the more you vary the greens, the more variety of nutrition you're also getting because they're gonna contain slightly different amounts of vitamins, minerals, and these phytonutrient oxidants, antioxidants. So it's good to vary them also for that reason. Let's make our green smoothie. So the first step that I always do is that I remove the green leaf from the stem or the stalk. And the reason for that is really because 
sometimes the store can be a bit bitter and I want to minimize the bitterness of my green smoothie so I can enjoy it more. So the next step is simply deciding, well, what fruit do you want in your green smoothie? And it really doesn't matter what fruit you choose. Today, I'm gonna to use banana, pineapple, and some blueberries. And really, I chose those because they were the ones I had at home. But it's up to you what you like. And also with this, experiment and see what works for you. But I have one top tip for you. Whatever fruit you decide to use, make sure that at least one of them is very high in soluble fiber. Remember, fiber is either insoluble and soluble. And the reason we want a fruit in there with high soluble fiber is because it kind of keeps the smoothie together. If you don't have a fruit with a lot of soluble fiber and you just choose fruits with a lot of insoluble fiber, what tends to happen is that your smoothie kind of separates and you get a foam on the top. And also when that happens, it tastes more green, like you're eating grass, which we want to avoid. So choose some fruit at least that has a lot of soluble fiber and the smoothie will be a beautiful consistency. So my go-to one is always a banana. Banana is packed with soluble fiber and it gives that smoothie a beautiful consistency. So whatever other fruit I use, I always put a banana in there and I always get amazing results. Another fruit that we have a lot of here in Zambia that has a lot of soluble fiber is mango. So that's another great option for you. This is the fruit that I'm going to be using today. If you're serious about green smoothies and incorporating them into your daily life, then I highly recommend that you invest in a good blender. It just makes your life so much easier. So I always start by adding uh, the greens into my blender first. I find that it blends a lot easier if I start with the greens. After that, I just add all the other fruit. So here is my pineapple, Oops. banana, blueberries. Guys, don't be scared to add a lot of fruit, especially if this is new to you. It is so important that you make the green smoothie so that it tastes good. So add as much fruit as you want in the beginning. And then over time, you can always reduce it. But you know, if you're trying to be perfect from the get go, because you know oh, all the nutrition is in the greens, so I want to maximize my greens, and hence you, you reduce the amount of fruit that you're putting in there, what tends to happen is that it tastes disgusting and the green smoothie will just sit in your fridge and nobody will drink it and enjoy it. And you will get none of the benefits of the greens. So always start with adding quite a bit of fruit and then as your taste buds adjust and start enjoying the green taste a little bit more, you can reduce the fruit. But I really also want to stress, don't worry about your blood sugar because you're thinking, oh, there's a lot of fruit in there. It is fine for two reasons. One, the greens are so nutritious and are so high in protein and minerals that it will slow down the release of sugar and mitigate that. Also, remember, we're not juicing the fruit here, we are blending it. So you have all that fiber in the fruit and the greens that are slowing down the release of sugar into your blood. So like Victoria Butenko, who is often considered the inventor of the green smoothie and who I had the pleasure of inviting to Zambia. She came to Moyo and held a talk. This was many years ago now, but she worked with a lot of diabetic patients as well and she noticed even when they were drinking the green smoothie with fruit their blood sugar started coming down okay that's how potent and healing this stuff is so don't worry about the fruit next step is just adding some water just make sure it's clean quality water Don't add too much water to start with because then you might turn out with a smoothie that's just not a nice consistency, a bit too watery. So I start with just 
a little bit and then I see how that goes. And if I need to add more water, I add more water. It's not an issue. So as soon as you've blended it, taste it. Just make sure it is delicious. And if it's not, you just tweak it. Ah, oh, delicious. So refreshing and I can't taste the greens. The pineapple is coming through pretty strong and then I have that beautiful consistency from the banana. Just divine. So as soon as I've made the green smoothie, I always drink a glass immediately. So cheers. And whatever is left, I put in a bottle and I take that with me during the day, I drink it. And this will last at least two days in the fridge as well. So you can make for the next day also. So my challenge to you is for 30 days, drink one liter of green smoothie every day and you will see your health transform before your very eyes. It is a miracle. Enjoy, have a blessed day, see you next time.